Thank you. Well, good afternoon. Looks like yesterday some of you party very, very hard. So anyway, uh, you know, I'm sure it was an enjoyable evening. It is always a, a pleasure for me to be back here in uh, Bocconi. It's a place that, you know, I came here so many years ago. Some of you were not even planned yet to be, to be in this world. Uh, and, you know, gives me always a lot of, uh, a lot of synergy. A lot of energy. Uh, I think some, somehow, you know, the paradox theme. One of a big paradox I had it when I decided to leave uh, cozy Perugia, where everything was working fine. I was playing tennis. You know, I didn't queue to go to the disco. I had, you know, a restaurant where my father was passing by later to pay bill. To come in a place where I didn't know anybody, where you actually had to study very hard. And you know, the question was how that can be good. Sounds like a paradox. But reality is that you know, this place changed my life. We, we can talk about that a bit more, uh, I guess, later. So just to give you a snapshot uh, of you know, what's happening. Uh, I work for Campbell Soup. Uh, Campbell Soup is going to be 150 years old next year. Actually, here is uh, the new headquarters. And you know, the first thing that comes to my mind in a world of all this change are we going to need the headquarters in the coming years? You know, um, do you need really the physical presence? It's going to be much more of a virtual world. And you know, we are obviously experiencing a lot of uh, challenges that many of you, you know, obviously have been facing. Uh, in recent time, we just closed this uh, massive acquisition. Um, the company is Netherlands. We invested 6.1 billion in this company, and. Uh, you know, that is going to push the, the, the weight of the portfolio for the first time in the history from soup, which is now less than 20%, to snacks, which is going to be almost uh, half of it. Now, uh, I do hope my boss knows something I don't know because he decided, she decided to appoint me to CEO just last week, so it's kind of a fresh, fresh news. And, uh, you know, so I'm experiencing myself a lot of this change. Uh, you know, and together with the other 20 plus thousand people that are going to work with me. So, you know, I'm fascinated by paradox. Actually, this definition of a Webster dictionary, seemingly contradictory, you know, to common sense, and yet perhaps true. I think it's the perhaps, which is a key word here, because it's up to us, I believe to define this perhaps. We can build a world around that perhaps, and we can make things that are seemingly opposite actually make sense. And I believe that's you know, linked to um, really what we can do more than what can be done. And I, I, you know, I believe that's one of the things that, after many years of working, um, I still believe is one of the critical, the critical focus, the learning process. And I believe, you know, that's, uh, that's one of the ways that you can actually put together uh, sentences that, you know, are perhaps, uh, you know, looking and not compatible, but actually maybe perhaps true. And I do believe really that life, as somebody said, is 10% what happened to you, 9%, 90%. What do you do with it? So I'm going to touch three major axes you know, of a seismic shift. There are many more, many more that are impacting different industry. I just want to go, you know, through it quickly so that we can have a Q&A. Um, I'm not known to, love, to, you know, to love a lot of PowerPoint. Actually, I have no clue how to make a PowerPoint presentation. I want you to know. This aesthetic has been done by somebody else. I'm going to be eternally grateful for. And so if we look at what's happening, especially in the food industry, there are three big themes that are really changing the way that we do business. One is impacting consumer. Uh, another one massive that you know, I'm obviously less equipped than the speaker this morning to talk about, which is uh, technology. And the last piece is we are, we are having in, uh, in the office a significantly more complex mosaic of different generations. Actually, I was thinking, you know, uh, we had a discussion with, Jam with the Jamario yesterday, you know, if I'm a, a baby boomer of a Generation X, I love to think that I'm a, mil I'm a millennial on a baby boomer's body, but that's, you know, that's a different story. But the reality is that in Italy especially, where you have a lot of entrepreneurial company, you do have an even wider 
number of generations in the office, and so how you harness all this diversity of thinking. And so I believe, you know, also the change that we've been going through in Campbell is really focusing on how we can make this diversity work for us. So if we look at uh, the consumer, you know, and, and you think about consumer the way that we've been using to think in the 60s, you know, father, mother, and two kids. This is less than 20%. This, is, this data is about, uh, you know, it's focusing on US. And I mean, obviously, the way the food is consumed has changed significantly. So if you wish, in the past, there was this kind of old model where a big company had a distribution system, had an R&D system. So we were telling consumer what to do. Consumer say, ah, OK, that's interesting. I'm going to buy it. And they repeat. And then there was a kind of virtual circle. But somehow, it was a closed system. So scale was very relevant. Nowadays, anybody can get into the market through the digital, to the online system. And actually, consumers, especially millennials, are not looking just for functional benefit. They are looking for a mission. What is the purpose of the brand? We'll talk about that uh, more coming up. And so in, in Campbell, we talk about our purpose as real food that matters for life's moment. I'll comment on that later on. But obviously, the complexity of the, consu the consumer, they want to know what is inside their food. You know, I moved to Czech Republic. I was the first time general manager. It was 1992. So, I mean, you know, I don't even remember how long ago it is. And I remember that a lot of consumers were looking at the back label. And I was saying, I mean, how, in, how on earth people are looking at the back label? I mean, what, what are you going to find that, right? Well, I tell you, now, nowadays, the first thing I do, I don't even look at the front. I go to the back label to see the content. So what I want to say is that we are talking about millennials, Generation X, but baby boomers are changing too. So it is very important to understand that the complexity is significantly in, in, increasing. Not only each of this group, and you can see that it can see. By the way, how many millennials are here in the room today? Up your hands. All right. Actually, a good size. Very good. So in US, you're running the show right now. You know, it's the biggest segment. Is the biggest segment uh, that, that there is. And millennials in US are much more attracted by those challenger brands. And you know, it's a little bit what we were hearing before about the paradox. Actually, unfortunately, sometimes challenger brand is not even the safest one. It's a lot about perception. So there are paradoxes all along that you know, it, is, it is very important. And big food clearly is not trusted. You know, when we talk about the ingredient, I believe trust is the most needed ingredient for any company to build back their business, because that's what is challenged right now for a number of reasons. And you, know, you may agree or not, but definitely this is a significant, a significant change compared to a generation that we were going just to, know, to, to buy the brand because we trusted it. And you know, the value of the brand, the value definition, I believe, in my mind, is really how strong is the relationship with your consumers in the long run? That's what gives value to a brand. And so I believe the whole equation here is, is under, under discussion. Now, the arrival of new generations, specifically the millennials, has driven a significant change you know, in my world, which is the food area, and more specifically in, this, in the snacking area. Snacking is not a product. Snacking is a behavior, all right? So millennials, contrary to what we've been using to do, which we had three square meal a day, my mother always used to say, you eat for breakfast, don't eat anything between breakfast and lunch, don't eat anything between lunch and dinner. Now, if you talk to any nutritionist right now, tells you to do absolutely the opposite. Many snacking, light snacking, during the day, avoid to eat, you know, half a kilo of mozzarella and pasta and something else for lunch, and the same thing for dinner, which, you know, basically we used to do in the past. So if you look at the, the consumer, these are all data referring to US, but, you know, 90% of the people is snacking. And outside of US, if you go in the developing market, snacking is a massive, is a massive consumption occasion. And so, you know, Indonesia, for example, where we have a, a significant operation, is uh, you know on average that people tend to 
or you know, let's say average is six times, but you know, there are people even up to seven times, uh, seven times a day. Uh, I like a lot the idea about, you know, that I heard before. People want healthier food, but the reality is that, you know, even the healthier definition is about perception. Now, I'm not a scientist, so obviously this is not my field, but as a company, for example, GMO is safe. I mean, science tells us, for what we know, that is safe. If we want to go to have non-GMO, we will starve a lot of the population on Earth. So I believe also there is a lot of those challenging, challenges that is very hard because a lot of it is, is perceptional and emotional. So I would say the complexity is clearly uh, increasing a lot. And this naking habit actually has pushed us, as Campbell, that we were based with soup, lunch, and dinner to really reconsider the way we get to consumer. Because that's a market where older generation, just on two occasions, is very hard to grow. And you know, if you don't grow, you become irrelevant. And you can't just buy a company, <laughs> I believe, as, a, as an objective. You have to create value uh, on what you have. Because to buy and grow with acquisition only, I think is very hard in the long run to be able to deliver, to deliver value. Now, 3G may disagree, but that's what I think. Another uh, significant ax that is you know, impacting, as I mentioned, is, uh, is technology. Now, to me, and actually there are several, you know, uh, several uh, thoughts out there. Uh, I, I read a bunch of books. Actually, I don't read anymore. I just listen on Audible. It's, it's easier for me when I travel and all that. You know, if you take uh, Singularity is Near, if you take actually Arari, uh, which if you didn't read, I really uh, you know, advise you to read uh, Sapiens and Homo Deus. I mean, all those kind of books are in the direction of integration be between technology and biology. And I mean, you know, this is one, you know, pretty, I would say, extreme right now, but, you know, definitely somehow everything is moving in that direction. But even in the shorter run, if you think about the technology, the impact of digital, uh, the omnichannels, technology has changed one key element that has been the source for, con for company to be up there for many, many years. And the same basic concept is called scale. Before, you need scale to launch a product. You need scale to get a lot of consumer. You need scale to have an R&D. Nowadays, you don't. A challenging brand can use crowdsourcing, can sell online, can sell, you know, uh, in different opportunity through means that before were not available. So now you have the small that is destroying the big. You leverage externalities. I, you know, the big example, Uber or Airbnb, as an example. So the world really is changing. Scale is not the safe mode that it used to be. This is a very, very strong concept that, you know, Jurassic people like me have to live with because you know we we were born with big companies and and you know that was really the idea of having something big. Big is not is not magic anymore because technology significantly uh, changed all that. And by the way, I don't know if you've been uh, to Seattle. Uh, I went there just to see a store, uh, Amazon Go. And you know, it's, a, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting thing. I don't believe that's gonna be a way we are gonna be shopping in the future in the short term, but I believe it's a great way to have a laboratory to understand consumer behavior. So, you know, obviously Amazon is uh, disrupting, uh, disrupting the market in a big, big, big way. Okay, so the famous think global, act local. That was a kind of phrase that we were saying, I would say to look cool, you know, a lot of time when people use all these kind of phrases, most of the time we don't really know what we are talking about. Uh, but I believe that, you know, with this revolution in technology, you actually have the capacity to be global and act local. And let me give you a, a very simple example, which is linked to a specific product. When you talk about per personalizing products, products is, can be also a service and all that. I was in Tokyo. And I'm eating in this famous restaurant that a, friend of, a very dear friend of mine invited me. And I was eating something that I'm not sure what it was because it was a very you know, funky Japanese stuff that you know, I was trying to figure out what it was. The small problem that one of my tooth broke. So it's the Thursday evening. I say, gee, I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm without a tooth right now. What am I going to do? 
And so my friends say, no problem. I'll take you to my dentist tomorrow morning. I say, yeah, but I need a crown. I say, he said, Luca, relax. Don't worry, you're in Japan, the technology place. I say, okay, fine. I go to his dentist. The guy takes uh, basically a mold on my mouth, 3D printer. The crown is printed in an hour. The guy adjusts it. Off I go in the afternoon with a new tooth. So what I want to say, imagine you know, the people that used to do all that by hand. This is, you know, the software is universal, but you can customize it uh, locally. So, you know, I believe that the think global and act local is going to actually be able to be leveraged if you go through iteration. You know, big companies, big companies used to test product to death. Look, I don't know if, personally, I believe in some case, people are just covering whatever, you know, to make sure obviously about the research is saying this. So that's one of the things. But the reality is that you have, if, if you want to be successful, you need to go back to more of a fast failing learning type of model. It's more of a startup approach. And, and you know, my idea of, uh, you know, driving Campbell to serve better this company is really to completely break, you know, silos and move along three directions, which are very simple. Decision making, speed, and accountability. Those three things, I think, work quite well in that, uh, you know, in that uh, area. Uh, on top of it, you know, the, the in interesting thing about technology is that you don't need a, a closed system, as I mentioned before. Imagine about open innovation, crowdsourcing, you know, what is called, what some people call exponential organization. You know, we were born with high level of hierarchy. These things are not working anymore, you know? And I tell you, even today that we say, oh, you know, we are willing to change, you know, the, the most stupid example is that when I was promoted, somebody told me, oh, but Luca, you need to change office. I say, who said I need to change office? Who cares? You know, I got my walking desk, I got a treadmill, a desk that I never use, and a able to make short meetings because I'm not known to like, you know, long meetings. So, you know, I believe we need also, as an older generation, be kind of understanding what's really important and relevant and what not, uh, what's not. So, the third piece, you know, uh, after consumer, consumer shifting uh, technology is what I believe, you know, it's even as powerful as technology. And is the fact that I was saying before, we have a mosaic in the office, big mosaic. Now, in Italy, where you have a lot of entrepreneurs, well over 70, you have an even wider, even wider. I tell you, Asia, Latin America is pretty much the same, where most of the company are family owned. You know, the founder or uh, the person that is in charge is not going to let it go very easy, which has, you know, all type of consequences sometimes. And, you know, the idea of company to be successful you really need to face a big paradox here. How is possible that generation that have such different, you know, ideas and needs, when I get out from, the, from this university, all I wanted was a job, a salary. I didn't want to work really for, for, a, for, for a tobacco company. That was the only big ethical decision I took. But I was not worried about, you know, the, the company purpose. I was not wondering, you know, what kind of good the product was going to do to the world. I mean, I didn't have that kind of uh, understanding. Now, there is a new generation, which is the millennia, which is actually very sensitive. It's a, a generation that you know, is much more on the cooperation. So how can you leverage that? And I believe that's a key. It's not a challenge. It's a key enabler. The paradox of two generations that look so far away that the one plus one can be less than two, I believe actually can create the new company. And a new company is a destructive company where hierarchy is not what really matters. There are objectives. Delegation is not abdication. So we still need to deliver numbers. We still need to you know, run inside certain guardrails. But you know, environment is important. You know, the mission, why we are here every morning, for us, is food that matters, real food that matters for life moments. That's the kind of purpose we have, we have in Campbell. So I believe, actually, if you think about it, you are open about taking risk. You know, if you think about it, fear is what governs us. 
90 plus percent of our decision is go are governed by fear. I don't know if you read actually Think Fast and Slow uh, by a certain gentleman, Canahan, who actually won a, a Nobel Prize. You know, we tend to run a lot of our stuff on system one, which is more, you know, fight and flight type of, uh, type of activity. But fear, even if it's good conceptually, you know, to make, to keep us alive, is a matter of doses. You know, water is good. Eight liter, you're dead. So I believe fear has to be controlled. And, and unless you're able to let people, as a leader, to let people do something you don't agree with, and accept the mistake, learn from it, iterate, and move on, unless we, especially as generation that is leading most of the company, are not able to do that, we really fail. And that would be very, very sad. So I believe, you know, while technology, obviously, has a huge impact, I believe this mix of, gen mix of generation has an even potentially bigger impact if we don't take advantage of it. So. The paradox journey. I believe there is a beauty in paradoxes. There is the beauty of what is possible. There is a beauty of what we can actually create. There is a beauty of what we can actually learn, making mistake, fixing it, taking accountability, and move on. I believe each of us doesn't want to be, you know, one of the sardines on the left. We want to be, I assume, on the right. Something that you know, can make a difference, something that can leave a place better than you know, what we got. And I think, you know, from my point of view, uh, my objective now, uh, getting you know, this big responsibility uh, in Campbell's Soup, is really to serve you know, the 20 more thousand people that work with me you know, in an open way, in a way where, again, mistake is a cost of business, but learning is a need. And, uh, and, you know, I'm, uh, I'm blessed to be here. I feel so proud of being part of Bocconi. You guys made already the right choice to start up with. So I'm really looking forward to see you not only making this world a better world, but to live a world that is equipped to get even better with the next step. Thank you.